Hi everyone, my name is Steve Byers and I'm a consultant with Chariot Solutions. Today we are going to look at how to create constraints with layout anchors. If you're not familiar with layout anchors, there's probably a good reason. Most apps support at least the current version of iOS and two versions prior. This means right now most apps are supporting at least iOS 8 and up. Layout anchors are available starting with iOS 9 though so it doesn't make sense to create traditional layout constraints for iOS 8 and lower and create constraints using anchors for iOS 9 and up. However, when iOS 11 rolls out this fall, apps will probably begin to stop supporting iOS 8, so this is a good time to get familiar with layout anchors and how they can help you in development. The app you see on the screen is an app with a simple layout but it is built completely in code using NS layout constraints. Let's dive into the code and see how it can be updated with anchors. First, I want to point out the two helper methods that were created. The first is used to create a view. The second is used to create a random color that will be used as the background color. Now, if we look at the view did load method, this is where the views are being laid out. You can see that some of these constraints are created without the need for a second item, which means there are extra parameters that we don't need but have to use. Others are created by referencing a second item. Still others are created using the visual format language, either with or without options. Having several different ways to create constraints in an app could lead to confusion, and one might easily be mistaken about what the layout should actually be. Let's see how we can fix this by using layout anchors. The first constraint that is getting set is the height, so we will get the height anchor and constrain it to a constant. That constant will be 300. Then we need to set this new constraint to be active by setting the isActive property to true. Next, we want to make the top of the view 20 points off of the super view's top. So we'll use the top anchor and constrain it equal to the view's top anchor with a constant set to 20. Now we can set the second view's height anchor like we did with the first view. Next, we need to break down the visual format language constraints. We want the first view to be 20 points from the left of the parent view. So we will use the left anchor with a constant of 20. Then, the first view's width needs to be set to 100 using the width anchor. The second view's left anchor can be constrained to the first view's right anchor with a constant of 10 to keep the spacing between the two objects. Then, the second view's right anchor can be constrained to the parent view's right anchor with a constant of negative 20. Alternatively, we could constrain the parent view's right anchor to the second view's right anchor so that we can use a positive number as the constant. Finally, we need the second view's top to be the same as the first view's top, so we will use the top anchor of both views to achieve this. Moving on to the third view. We want this view to touch the leading and trailing layout margin. However, there are no layout margin anchors. Instead, we need to use the layout margin guides leading anchor for each view. In the same way, we will set up the trailing layout margin anchor. Next, we want the third view to be 20 points below the first view so we will use the third view's top anchor and the first view's bottom anchor. Just like when we set up the second view's right anchor, when we use the third view's bottom anchor to set a constraint to the parent view's bottom anchor, this could be either a positive or a negative number based on how the constraint is constructed. I'll use a negative number. Now we can build and run. You can see that the layout is the same as it was before. The difference is that this is much easier to read. For example, if I look at line 30 
and read it as close to an English sentence as possible, I read that the second view's top is being constrained to the first view's top. I could also create additional constraints and not set them as active immediately. I could save them to a variable, then I can do things like set the priority, as I would with a normal NS layout constraint. I could also store them for later and set them as active or inactive as the user interacts with the app. This has been a high-level overview of layout anchors. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck creating constraints with anchors in the future.